From stories across the world of stories here at home, this is the National News Podcast. A very good evening to you, I'm Nitya Delavera. Hello there, good evening. I'm Nikit Kharunaratna. We'll start off by taking a look at the headlines. The Sinopharm vaccination procedure commences on the orders of the President. A higher response from the youth on the 10,000 beds in 10 days program. A type of the Indian virus has been found in Sri Lanka. A record income from the export of flowers and foliage plants. Now on your top story this evening, the inoculation of the Sri Lankan public with the Sinopharm vaccine manufactured in China commenced today. Now the program got underway from the Panadura Medical Officer of Health Division. The World Health Organization has granted approval for emergency usage of this vaccine. The WHO has so far granted approval for six types of vaccines for the control of the spread of the COVID-19 disease under the emergency usage and advisory category. The Sinopharm vaccine received approval on the sixth occasion. This is the only vaccine produced on its own by a non-Western country. A team of specialists of the World Health Organization conducted an extensive investigation into the Sinopharm vaccine. This was the first instance of the WHO approving a Chinese vaccine for emergency usage. Director General of the WHO says that accordingly, Sinopharm vaccine has received the approval for worldwide usage under the COVAX program of the International Health Body. Chairman of the Specialist Advisory Committee on Strategic Immunization Procedures of the WHO, Alejandro Cravito, has pointed out that adequate information has been received to substantiate the safety and efficiency of the Sinopharm vaccine. A special feature of the vaccine has been its ability to be stored without much difficulty. Therefore, it has become appropriate for a country with less resources facing poverty. The vaccine is appropriate to be used in middle and low income countries. It has also been recommended that the Sinopharm vaccine is suitable for inoculation of persons between the ages of 18 and 59 years. It could also be used as a source of vaccination for persons over the age of 60 years under medical instruction. However, clinical trials are still being carried out to ascertain the feasibility of using the vaccine on people over the age of 60 years. The government of China says preparations are underway to dispatch via ships around 20 20.4 million doses of the Sinopharm vaccine. The Chinese government adds that it extends its contributions for the COVAX program of the World Health Organization. The People's Republic of China, upon a request made by the government of Sri Lanka, donated 600,000 doses of Sinopharm to the country on the 31st of March this year. Initially, the vaccine was given to Chinese nationals. Accordingly, 3,000 Chinese nationals received two doses of the Sinopharm vaccine. State Minister Professor Channa Jayasumana said that they have planned in the beginning to commence inoculation of the Sri Lankan public from next Monday. He added that, however, President Gotabe Rajapaksha instructed him this morning to commence inoculation without further delay. Accordingly, arrangements were made to commence vaccination from today itself. The State Minister said that they conducted further talks with the Chinese ambassador in Colombo today. It was on instructions of the President that further talks were conducted with the Chinese authorities. He expressed his honour and gratitude to the Chinese government for bringing the Sinopharm vaccine. Sri Lanka had to wait till it received the WHO approval for the inoculation program. State Minister Professor Chan Jai Suman has also recalled that certain anti-Chinese groups in the country with the support of some foreign countries have agitated against the inoculation program. A small group of businessmen joined hands with foreign forces against the Chinese manufactured vaccine. He added that, however, they were able to defeat their sinister arms. Around 187,775 persons were reported to have received the second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine under the COVID-19 inoculation program. Similarly, 1,669 Sri Lankans received the first dose of the Russian-made Sputnik V vaccine. The third day of the inoculation of the Sputnik V vaccine took place at the Kalatuavatta Purana Viharasthania in Mullariava today. 
Dr. Chandimaji Vandra has clarified on the need for the people of Sri Lanka to strictly adhere to protective health measures at all times and to be enlightened on new strains of the coronavirus presently being spread. He has illustrated on the health guidelines to be followed by the general public. We have sequenced COVID-19 samples received from COVID-19 patients to detect the SARS-CoV-2 virus and we have, we have handed over our report to the Minister of Health today morning and from our analysis we found that the majority of the sample belong to the B117 England variant, we call it as a Kent variant or UK variant. So more than 90% of the samples sequenced belong to uh, UK variant. Apart from that we have two interesting findings, one is uh, you know, we have detected uh, B1617 that is the Indian variant and as well as B1351 that is the South African variant from the last sequencing analysis. So both Indian and South African variant were detected from quarantine centers so those are from foreign returnees apart from that we were detected another variant from Jaffna area that is B1428 that is mainly sp you know spreading in Denmark and European region apart from that we had a Sri Lankan variant called B1411 that was the main variant uh, responsible for most of the COVID-19 infections in the past especially during the second uh, wave but uh, you know especially during the month of April Sri Lankan variant is replaced by the UK variant which is an interesting finding usually uh, you know previous all our previous reports Sri Lankan variant was the dominant one but now we see England variant has replaced the Sri Lankan variant and it has become the predominant variant causing COVID-19 infections in Sri Lanka. So there is a you know there is a huge public concern that UK Indian variant is found in Sri Lanka. Indian variant and UK variant both behave similarly especially you know because UK variant is the predominant one found in Sri Lanka and it you know it is associated with increased mortality as well as increased transmissibility. So as public you need to be very careful not to get the virus into your body. So the best way to prevent getting the virus into your body is to stop going out unless it is absolutely necessary and if you are going out you need to wear a mask properly and you need to wear a tightly fitting mask and you need to wash your hands with soap and water and also use hand sanitizer as and when necessary so those are the four important you know measures that you need to take to prevent the virus coming into your body so it's very important to understand although we have detected the Indian variant from one sample in Sri Lanka the majority of the infections currently are caused by the UK variant which is you know one of the main variants of concern in the world so there is no difference between UK and Indian variant when it comes to the transmissibility uh, because you know both has increased transmissibility compared to the wild type virus so as public you need to take all measures to prevent the virus coming into your body. It has been identified that the English England virus variant was the prominent strain that spread COVID-19 disease in Sri Lanka. This fact has been substantiated through examination of biosamples of COVID-19 patients reported in the country. Persons infected with this variant have been reported from Colombo, Kurunagala, Kalutara, Polonnaruwa, Kandy and Vaunia. A total of 970 COVID-19 patients were detected today. 1,335 fully recovered patients have left the hospitals today. Accordingly, the total recoveries in the country has increased up to 103,098. A total of 18,446 COVID-19 patients are still receiving treatments in hospitals. President Gotabe Rajapaksa has instructed Health Minister Pavitra Vanyarachi to look into the facilities being provided at the COVID treatment centres throughout the island, constructed under the COVID-19 controlling programme of the Ministry of Health. Accordingly, the Minister has inspected the Leadership Training COVID-19 Treatment Centre in the Amilipitiya Police Division and treatment centres in the hospitals in Amilipitiya, Rakwana and Kahavatta and also at the treatment centre of the Ruanpura Faculty of Education. The Health Minister has instructed the relevant officials on this occasion to increase the capacity of beds in the emergency treatment and intensive care units of the Amilipitiya hospitals. Construction in the most modern hospital in Sri Lanka with the highest capacity for all health facilities is nearing completion. It is being constructed throughout the contributions of the Brandix Green Plant Institute for the treatment of COVID-19 patients and the Army Seva Vanita unit. The hospital could be used for other clinical purposes as well. 
Head of the National Operational Center for the Prevention of the COVID-19 Outbreak and Army Commander General Shavendra Silva and the chairperson of the Army Seva Vanita Unit, Mrs. Sujiva Nelson, have also participated in the inspection tour. Minister Namal Rajapaksa was engaged in an inspection tour at the Tangol Base Hospital today. The minister said on this occasion that steps will be taken to provide eight more beds to the intensive care unit of the hospital. He added that measures will also be taken to commence repairs in the unit within two weeks. Minister Namal Rajapaksa said that at this instance they are engaged in massive commitments as a government, the health sector and the three armed forces to control the spread of the COVID-19 disease. He added that they are also extending assistance as citizens of the country to control the pandemic. The project, titled 10,000 Beds in 10 Days, has commenced since yesterday to fulfill immediately the needs of the COVID-infected persons, according to a concept of Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports, Namal Raj Paksa. The National Youth Services Council has taken the initiative in the implementation of the 10,000 Beds project. Youth societies are extending their contributions in this regard in addition to several voluntary youth groups. Chairman of the National Youth Services Council, Damita Vikramasinghe, says that a program to produce 3,500 beds have already commenced through the assistance of the island-wide youth societies. Commander-in-Chief of the Kilinochi Defence Security Forces, Major General Harendra Ranasinghe, has inspected the new COVID treatment centre being constructed in Bharatipuram, Kilinochi, yesterday. The hospital is consisted of 200 beds. Chairman of the Polonaru District Development Committee, Parliamentarian Amrakirti Atukorala, says that measures are being taken to convert two closed-down schools in the Hinguragod Educational Division into COVID treatment centres. Now, the World Health Organization approved for emergency use a COVID-19 vaccine from China's state-owned drug owner, Sinopharm, yesterday bolstering Beijing's push for a bigger role in inoculating the world. In a potential boost to global vaccine supplies, a Chinese COVID-19 vaccine has been granted emergency use by the World Health Organization. China's state-owned drug maker Sinopharm is the first vaccine by a non-Western country to win WHO backing on Friday. It's also the first time the WHO has given emergency use approval to a Chinese vaccine for any infectious disease. Sinopharm is one of two main Chinese coronavirus vaccines already being given to hundreds of millions of people at home and abroad. The WHO emergency listing is a signal to regulators that the product is now considered safe and effective. The listing also allows it to be included in COVAX. That's the global program providing vaccines mainly to poor countries struggling with vaccine supplies. The WHO said in a statement, quote, its easy storage requirements make it highly suitable for low resource settings. Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus spoke on Friday. This afternoon, WHO gave emergency use listing to Sinopharm Beijing's COVID-19 vaccine, making it the sixth vaccine to receive WHO validation for safety, efficacy and quality. This expands the list of vaccines that COVAX can buy and gives countries confidence to expedite their own regulatory approval and to import and administer a vaccine. The WHO estimates Sinopharm's efficacy to be 79% for all age groups. It recommended the vaccine for adults aged 18 or older in a two-dose schedule with a spacing of three to four weeks. In the COVAX program, Sinopharm's vaccine now joins those developed by Pfizer-BioNTech, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, and as of last week, Moderna. But a WHO official said it would be up to Sinopharm how many doses it chooses to provide the program. The WHO also said it could reach a decision on Sinovac, China's other main COVID-19 vaccine, by next week. Handing over of dried food parcels valued at 10,000 rupees to families undergoing quarantine as a result of the COVID-19 disease has taken place in many parts of the island today as well. 1,077 families in the Grama Niladari divisions of Tittavalgala, Niravia and Nikadalupota in the Divisional Secretariat Division of Ganevatta in Kurunagala have been subjected to quarantine. The 10,000 rupee dried food parcels have been distributed among the today as well. Food parcels have also been distributed among families undergoing quarantine in Kasberva. 
1,675 families in the Gramanilidari divisions of Gorakapitya and Nampamanua are being quarantined. Now, a series of religious programs titled Universal Hour of Blessings was conducted at all places of religious worship throughout the island at 6.45 p.m. today. Now, the fervent wish of all participants in these programs was for the elimination of the corona pandemic from the earth. The Vishwa Ashirvada Horava was organized through the blessings of the President Gotabe Rajapaksha on a concept of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha. The main Buddhist religious observances took place at the Sima Malika of the Ganga Rama Viharasthane in Colombo. The Mahasangha, headed by the Anunayaka of the Malvata Chapter, Venerable Niangoda Vijita Siritera, Anunayaka of the Askiri Chapter, Venerable Venerue Upali Thera, head of the Amrapura Nikaya, Venerable Ganthune Asaji Thera, and Anunayaka of the Ramanya Nikaya, Venerable Bale Boraguna City Theras participated at the occasion. Anunayaka of the Malvata chapter, Venerable Niyanguda Vijita Siri Naika Thera delivered an Anusasana at the occasion. Sunangto Sri Lanka Dipeta a group including State Minister Vidura Vikramanayaka and foreign ambassadors were also present. This is a story of a group of people who have made enormous contributions for the country to earn valuable foreign exchange at a time when many entrepreneurs were enmeshed in many problems as a result of the COVID pandemic. The courageous endeavour has been reported from Mananda Gahamula in Diulapitiya. The Green Lanka Suahas Flower Association was established in the year 2006. Since then, it has been strengthening the local economy through procurement of much-needed foreign exchange. The association has been especially successful last year in bringing a massive revenue to the country through foreign-based transactions. The association was reported to have earned a revenue of 60 million rupees through exportations of flowers and exquisite leaves since March last year up to March this year at a time when the impact of the COVID pandemic was at the highest level. The corona pandemic has thrown many industries into crisis, yet the horticultural industrialists have overcome this challenge. President of the Sri Lanka Podujana Flower Cultivators and the Affiliated Professionals Forum and Green Lanka Suhas Flower Association Indika Vijay Surya says that the dedication and untiring efforts of producers, including himself, have enabled to achieve this unique feat. You may recall how the entire country was engulfed in a curfew in March last year. By the time the country regained its normal status by the month of May that year, there had been a massive amount of foreign orders for exotic flowers and foliage before members of the Green Lanka Suahas Flower Association. All these orders have been successfully fulfilled. 48 members of the association are engaged in the exportation of exotic plants. 26 members are engaged in the cultivation of anthurium flowers. They have together earned a revenue of 21 million rupees last year. An income of 16 million rupees has been generated through exporting orchid flowers. The association further says that their aim is to turn Sri Lanka into the hub of Asian flower cultivation through enhancement of the local flower industry. Now, in the meantime, a gas search notification has been issued to effect that any type of oil should not be mixed with coconut oil used for edible purposes. Accordingly, coconut oil being sold in bulk or retail quantities in bottled or other forms should not be contaminated with any type of oil. The gasset notification was released yesterday according to the powers vested upon the Consumer Affairs Authority. An order has been given to all coconut oil importers, coconut oil purifiers, manufacturers, stockists and those who are engaged in packaging and distributing as well as traders to not mix any type of oil into coconut oil used for consumption. Meanwhile, the Sri Lanka Customs has taken measures today to re-export stocks of coconut oil that have been subjected to much controversy in the recent past due to the presence of cancer causes 
processing substances. 230 tons of coconut oil imported by a private company were brought to Colombo Harbour in 12 20-foot containers under the full supervision of the Sri Lanka Customs on the 30th of last month. These containers were loaded today to the ship Ever Ethic, which arrived at the Colombo Harbour last night. The vessel was scheduled to leave for Malaysia at 9 p.m. today. Sri Lanka Navy has been successful yesterday in apprehending 235 kilograms of Kerala cannabis and around 500 kilograms of onion seeds, while the contraband goods were being smuggled into the country from India. The raid has been conducted in the northwestern sea north of Kalpitiya and also in the western coast. A naval craft upon monitoring an Indian fishing vessel, which violated the international maritime zone by entering the Sri Lankan Sea Territory yesterday, has detected more than 235 kilograms of Kerala cannabis, neatly packed in 118 parcels. The naval personnel say that seven Indian nationals were also detected in the legal craft. They add that the stock of narcotics was destroyed by setting on fire and the seven Indian nationals were sent back to the Indian maritime zone. In another search operation conducted in the sea area beyond Nigambo, two suspects were reported to have been arrested with more than 500 kilograms of onion seeds. The Navy further says that the contraband goods were being transported in a dinghy craft. The naval authorities further say that the suspects and the stock of onions were handed over to the Katunayaka Customs Office for further legal action. Meanwhile, the Talangama police station in a raid conducted in Battramulla and Padukka areas has taken into custody 48 kilograms of Kerala cannabis. Upon interrogation of a suspect arrested in Battramulla with 8 kilograms of Kerala cannabis, two other locations where cannabis stocks were hidden in Padukka and Galagadara were detected. Police media spokesman DIG Ajit Rohan has said that three other suspects have been taken into custody in this regard. Investigations on the suspects currently being held under detention orders are scheduled to be conducted within seven days. The Chief Judicial Sanganayaka of Yatinwara in the Malvata chapter of the Shyamu Pali Vanshika Mahanikaya and Chief Incumbent of the historic Kotabogoda Raja Mahaviharya in the Kadugannava, Venerable Dr. Valgovagoda Saranankara Thero, has passed away. The Venerable Thero was 70 years old at the time of his demise. Venerable Dr. Valla Uagoda Saranankara Thero was a Nayaka Thero who has rendered an immense service to the nation in the religious and social spheres. The final religious rites are scheduled to be conducted at the Viharastania at 1.30 pm tomorrow. Thereafter, cremation is to take place at the Giragama Crematorium in Pilimatalawa. And now for sports news. Mahesh Jaikori has become eligible to represent Sri Lanka at the Tokyo Paralympic event. This was officially reported by the National Paralympic Committee. The sixth Paralympic tournament is scheduled to be conducted in the Tokyo city in Japan from the 24th of August to 5th of September this year. Mahesh Jaikori is scheduled to compete in the rowing event. The qualifying round of competitors in rowing sports in the Asian and Oceania zones of the Paralympic Sports Tournament was held in Tokyo City. Jaikori has secured the first place in the men's single rowing event held yesterday. As a result, he has become qualified to take part in the Paralympic Tournament. That's all the news for today. Join us again at the same time tomorrow. Good night. Good night.